I remember when I got saved 15 years ago, I hated church, hated church people, hard drugs and alcohol, I wanted nothing to do with those things, even though I believed in God, even though I believed in Jesus, even though I believed in the Bible, I was headed to a devil's hell, because I didn't return, repented of my sin, and been saved. The Bible clearly teaches that if you are born again, you will not walk in darkness. Nobody in the Bible exists that lived a lifestyle walking in darkness was saved and born again. It doesn't exist. In 2022, we have these, these Christians that supposedly claim they got their own thing going and they don't need church. You won't find that anywhere in Scripture. It does not exist. When I first got saved all those years ago, I'd seen, never seen a church praise and worship the way we do before. And I thought it was so weird and unholy and out of order. And that was so unbiblical and so wrong. You go around the children's church, you go around teens. It's funny, you guys said when I was in the world, they stood all the evil, wicked concerts, scream and mosh and yell and scream and do all those things. I never once wondered, I wonder if that's real, they're trying to draw attention to themselves. It's funny how judgmental will we get when we get to the house of God, when people raise up a hand and honestly just praise the Lord. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Let me tell you something, we serve a holy God who is so worthy. My review, I start pulling up that video. You guys heard a lot this morning about Caleb Freeman. Caleb Freeman in 2017 had a life changing car wreck. He should have been brain dead. He should have basically been a vegetable the rest of his life. He is, they told him they would never breathe, stand up, walk again. And God miraculously began to touch and heal him. They said before his car wreck, he was very shy, would never raise up a hand in worship, would never just never approach a girl, which he blew. Uh, all the girls in the crowd, several kisses when he was out here. But he was so, so, so uh, uh, shy. And one of the things his dad said, he got saved after the wreck. He got saved and his dad said that God literally gave him a new spirit. Let me tell you something. That's what it is to be saved. The old man dies. Everybody asked Brent, how would you change? How would you stop doing cocaine and meth and ecstasy? Get slaughtered drunk and smoking weed all day, every day. How did you quit doing that? In one second, I'll tell you how. God gave me a new spirit. The old man died. I'm saved and I'm born again. That's what it is to be saved. That's what it is to be changed. I may bring him in. By the way, teens, we pray. I think we're going to have a big back to school bash for you guys on August 13th. We need to plan for that. But hey, I want, I want you to see this is about a two minute video, one of the nights that he shared. Myron, would you go ahead and play that video? I felt like. God was spreading in the words, why well, can't I can take it out of the world? And it speaks perfectly for all its feelings. I felt like it was what God showed me. He was always got my back. Even when I felt like I didn't have a lot of time for my own. That's right. Let's hear it. Here it goes. Not for a minute, one time for a second. Not my heart.
God. The Bible teaches that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Caleb wasn't willing to do it before the wreck, but he is now. Everybody look at me at the sound of my voice. Every knee in this room will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord before you head to an eternity in heaven or eternity in hell. We see in Scripture that the demons believe and tremble. We see that when Jesus approached demon-possessed people, they came and fell on their knees and worshipped. Shame on some of us that the demons worship better than most of us do. <clears throat> Psalm 103. Father, finish what you started. You're moving in this place. Let walls fall. Let chains be broken. Save the lost. Finish what you started. Thank you for your presence moving in this place. God, we didn't come in here to go through religious motions. We didn't come in here for a bunch of re uh, religious dead formalism, God. We came in here to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Fill this house with your ghost. Save sinners, God. As one of the young ladies was talking, she was saying about the car wreck. And she said, well, that, that may or may not happen to me. Whether that happens to us or not, death is imminent. It is appointed unto man once to die, then the judgment. Every person under the sound of my voice will die and will stand before a righteous God. God, in 2022, many say, only God can judge me. That's right, and you will. And that will terrify us. Thank you for a loving God who corrects us who disciplines us, who cares for us enough to warn us and tell us the truth. Thank you for a loving God who gave his best, who gave us his only son. Thank you for the blood. Thank you that we can be saved and forgiven. Help us to remember this morning the number one tool in the hand of Satan is a bunch of religious fakes. It was true 2,000 years ago. It's true now. Help us keep our eyes fixed and focused on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Have your way in the scripture. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 103, the Bible says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. This psalm is really a call to worship. I had them start that, uh, that video right before I preached because I couldn't help. I began to tear up as I saw Caleb Freeman again. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless His holy name. We see the psalmist. This is a psalm of David. We see the psalmist really tell his own soul calls upon himself to praise and to worship God. Sometimes we've got to do that. If Caleb Freeman can get down and praise and worship God and raise up his hands, then so can you, faith ignited. The Bible says in verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I put a note in my Bible teens. I put Caleb Freeman. I so I put my Bible so I wouldn't forget him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Why? Why did I put that there? Because of what I just preached and said, if he can get down and praise and worship God, excuse me, if I can get down and praise and worship and raise a hand to God, our God is so worthy. The psalmist says, he calls upon himself to worship God. And he says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. I want to talk to you. Is there anybody, if you're saved and born again, would you raise up your hand? If you are saved and changed and born again, hold up your hand very high. If you are saved and born again, keep your hand up in the air. If you know that you're going to heaven, if you know that you're following Jesus Christ, raise up your hand. I'm going to look you in the face. Raise up your hand. All right, you can put your hands down. I want to talk to you who are saved and born again for a moment. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Why does he tell us that to forget not? Listen here for those who raise your hands. Because sometimes we do forget. Sometimes we forget where God brought us from. You know, I've been a pastor here for a year and a half. You guys hear me share my little 30 second story all the time. I never want to get over it. I never want to forget it. Sometimes people say, well, you did drugs and alcohol. That's what you needed to get right with God. Hey, let me tell you something. You can never touch drugs. You can never get drunk. You can have a doctor and a master's degree and have a great family. Look at me. Without Jesus Christ, you're in the same devil's hell. And if you look at me and think, well, that's what you need, and you think you don't need it, let me tell you something. You are the epitome. You are the definition of self-righteousness because you find your righteousness outside of God. Church, don't you forget. Don't forget there are benefits to serving God. When he calls himself to worship, he's about to remind us of some benefits. You know, one of the things that we forget, you know,
You know, I, I, was, I was convicted in the last couple of weeks about complaining, grumbling, and murmuring, negative, a negative attitude. Let me tell you something. When you complain, when you grumble, when you murmur, that is against God Himself. Negativity is the language of unbelief. I begin to become convicted about it. You know, sometimes we forget the benefits of serving God. By the way, if you raised your hand, if you're saved and born again, you lost your place in hell. Amen. By the way, if you're saved and you're born again, God has saved you, plucked you out of the darkness. Don't you forget where God brought you from. Amen. I couldn't think, help but think about Caleb during those benefits. When's the last time, honestly, are you honestly thankful that you have eyesight, that you can breathe, that you can hear, that you can walk in the world. Are you, are you thankful for those things? Is anybody here thankful yes. for those things? Yes. Have you told God that? Yes. Sometimes we, we forget sometimes the simple things that we have. His dad had to help him walk up on stage. It was a little bit hard to understand him when he was speaking. <laughs> he has trouble speaking and God saved him. Now he uses what voice he has left to proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord. Amen. Many of us who raise our hand, our voice works perfectly fine. we got a lost and dying world, people drowning around us. And we won't even say anything. we got people in here, I know for a fact, that are saved and born again, and they intentionally didn't even raise their hand. Wow. I'll say this, you know who you are. That speaks more about your heart. Let's go preach it, Branson. <laughs> Verse 3. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Don't you forget that God is a God who forgives. If you're saved and you're changed, say, I am forgiven. I am forgiven. Say, I am forgiven. I am Don't you forget one of the benefits of serving God is that you are forgiven. You know, I've been saved for almost 15 years, Stephanie. Sometimes we forget that we've been forgiven. How many of you tell how many of you guys we, we listen to that verse? If we, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin. But it cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We're saved and changed and born again. We're forgiven. And then we go as Christians and we mess up and make a mistake. And it's like you said sorry for the same thing like 50 times over. Why? Because sometimes we forget that God is the God who loves and forgives. I'm going to read to you this passage out of Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12. Listen, actually, I'm going to read in verse 15 first. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 15. Let those of us who are mature think this way. Wait, what are you saying, Paul? He said, let those of us, if you're mature, spiritually speaking, think this way. What way? I'm glad you asked. Verse 12. Not that I've already attained this or I'm already perfect. Paul says, I'm not arrived and I'm not perfect. But I press on. To make it my own, because Christ Jesus made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I made it my own. I'm not arrived. I'm not saying I'm perfect. But listen, this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way. Some of you look right here. Some of you just need to let it go. If God says you're forgiven, if the blood says you're forgiven, you are forgiven. Let it go. Don't let your past come and hold you. Don't let your past come and condemn you. Guess what? There was only one that's lived that's perfect, and his name's Jesus. Amen. We serve a God who loves and forgives. Christians stop walking in condemnation. This is one of the snares of the devil to get you looking in the rearview mirror. This is why we look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Somebody in here needs to say, I am forgiven. I'm forgiven. Don't you forget, we serve a God who forgives. Some of you, I'm telling you what, this is really key to somebody in this room. Look at me. God has forgiven you. You've asked for forgiveness. Let it go. The cross and the blood declares your forgiveness. Amen. Don't insult. Do not insult. Open this for me, please, honey. Do not insult the blood. Take the cap off. Thank you. Don't insult the blood. Don't insult the cross. 
You are forgiven. Let right. it go. Right. Move on. Press on. Look forward, forgetting what lies behind. Amen? Amen. Amen. I love God. Verse 4. So verse 3 says, Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases. By the way, we serve a God who heals. Amen? Amen. We serve a God who heals. I was thinking, I talked to Pastor Zach Stacy, of all those photos of me and another guy this week that I met, Unity Covenant Church in Arkansas, powerful pastor. And I was beginning to think, we were talking, and we have a lot of the same beliefs. I believe all the Bible, I believe all the gifts of the Spirit. I believe God is a God of miracles, signs, and wonders. He said something this week I'll never forget. You know what? Listen, I am not chasing miracle signs, and wonders. Amen. I'll tell you what I'm seeking. I'm seeking Jesus. Jesus said he came to seek and to save the lost. That's our motto here at Faith United. You know, a lot of these other churches just think that's so small and elementary. They arrogantly act like that's just like down here on the pedestal compared to their spiritual gifts, how spiritual they are. Let me tell you something, that's arrogance and pride. That's not true. Jesus' main mission was to see souls saved, and that's ours at Faith Ignited. That will never change. I believe in miracle signs and wonders. Guess what, though? I'm not chasing them. You know what? I am not following miracle signs and wonders. Miracle signs and wonders are following me. Amen. And let me tell you something. The last 15 months, and I'm short time here, I can tell you this. I have literally, I can read through you all the gifts of the Spirit. I've seen every single one of them operating here. We've seen healing. We've seen power. We've seen God actually touch, heal, and change. Brittany Brooks' daughter was Haley. Can you raise your hand? Supposed to have a heart surgery. It didn't happen. She asked to get anointed with oil. We laid hands on her. Went to they went to Colorado on Tuesday. And my spirit, I went home on that Sunday. Told my wife, so did others that felt it. Said she was 100% healed. They're not going to have that surgery. They're going to go do the test, and it's going to show she was healed. I get a call from Brittany on Tuesday afternoon. We're coming back home. Her heart is healed. There's no surgery. We serve our God. Yeah. 
So the youth is renewed. The eagles, when the storms come, they actually rest. They cease striving. Because when the storms come, there's updrafts in those winds. When they rest and open their wings, the storms actually just take them up higher and higher. Friend, one of you in here needs to forgive and forget and let it go. And just be still and rest and see striving and let God take you up higher and higher. Verse 6, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. This is the part where some of you can get really weirded out. By the way, I don't care. By the way, I believe in the Bible. I believe in God and in angels. I believe in a miraculous spiritual God. I believe in Jesus. By, by the way, I also believe in hell and Satan and actual demonic spirits. Go read Jesus' story. The wicked things followed his ministry around. They followed Paul around. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. One of the rooms in the back rooms of this church here is just going to seem dark. I'm getting to put it all together. You know, sometimes we're playing Mighty Morning Quarterback. Somebody was up here working on the drums the other night, on Friday night. I get a text. Hey, Brad's in the corner of my eye. I was alone here, and this book flew off the shelf. Hmm. Five minutes later, I put it up flat so it wouldn't come off the shelf. I just thought it was sitting there funny. He said he was playing the drums, and five minutes later, the book was thrown off the shelf in one of those back rooms. I began to meditate. Asked my wife, asked Christine, did you notice anything down there? My wife said, yeah, to be honest, Thursday night I was leaving, and as I hit the door, I heard something down that way. I began to realize that same room has a window that kids can't even reach, and it doesn't move slowly. You have to, like, crank it to open it. A human couldn't get in or out of it. It would be impossible if you saw the way that the is open. I started thinking, you know, that window, I've closed it. Me and my wife have closed it, like, ten times. But nobody goes back there. This room's locked. The person who sent me that text, see, I kind of got the chills. I came up here. Me and that person began to pray. Amen. By the way, in Luke chapter 10, the seven they were, the seven they were sent out, they returned saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us. Jesus said, don't rejoice in that. Rejoice that your names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. I give you power to tremble yes, over serpents right. and scorpions. Nothing by any means shall harm you. The Bible says Jesus rejoiced in that, in that same hour. Yes. Well, let me tell you something. I came up Friday night and I rejoiced in that same hour. And let me tell you something. That sucker is gone. Amen. I don't care. Read your Bible and believe it. Yes, there's spiritual oppression of the devil. Yes, people are demon possessed. Guess what? We don't have to be afraid. That's what the enemy tries to do. Work by fear. Let me tell you something. My God is a deliverer. And the devil does oppress Christians. He does. I walked up here and began to pray. I said, in Jesus' name, get out of here. Don't you come back. And don't come to my house tonight either. Don't come to this other guy's house tonight. We're going to go home and sleep in peace. I command you in Jesus' name, flee and don't you come back. Amen. We have that authority? Yes. Look at me. Look at me, you Christians who are weirded out. Look at me. Read your Bible. Read it. Believe it. Leonard Ravenhill said in the book, one of these days, some poor soul is going to pick up the Bible, read it and believe it, and put the rest of it to shame. I'll tell you what's happening to here at Faith United. It happened to me when I got saved at the well. I'm having to unteach a bunch of Christians so they can look at the Word of God and actually believe it. Because our dead formalism is lying to us. Our dead traditionalism is deceiving us. God delivers the oppressed. Amen. Amen. I told my son, Braylon, he's 10 years old. I began to talk to him about these things. I said, listen, listen, I have arrogance and pride. I think I'm more stronger and more powerful than the demon spirit. I'm not. I said, son, here's what I want you to think. There's a huge guy right here. Huge guy right here. They're ginormous. Huge. Two, three times my size. Massive men. And so let's say they both got knives in their hand. They're going to step towards me and kill me. And I'm in a room backed up. But I look down, and I actually have a 12-gauge pump shot. Oh, and then I look over, and I have a badge of the authority. Oh, things have just changed a little bit. Because I got the weapon, and I got the authority. And they ain't gonna win. We have the weapons of righteousness. In Jesus' name, he's given us the power to trample the church and destroy the church. The Lord works for sins, righteousness, and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, 
his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. That blessed me when the done kid spoke on Job this morning. That blessed me when he read that scripture. I'm going to tell you something. It's 2022. Everybody pay attention. This is for all the Christians. Most of you want nothing to do with any spiritual oversight, any correction, or any discipline. I'm not going to raise my hand. I'm saved. I should want to raise my hand. Okay. Okay. Welcome to the American Attitude in 2022. I'm just going to split and the altar call comes. I'm just going to leave. Even though the pastor's asked several times that it's dis disrespectful, when they do the altar call, I'm just going to leave. I've got nothing to pray about, but I have nothing to praise about. If you're mad and upset, all right, that's fine. That's fine. The Bible talks about those who despise authority. Those who despise authority, the blackness and the darkness of hell is reserved for those who despise authority. And let me tell you something I did for years. And you know what? You know what I learned, Dan? You know what I learned as a young, born-again Christian? I learned that when God's Word corrects me, to go ahead and say, okay, I'm wrong and He's right. Amen. Hebrews 12, 3. Consider Him who endured, that's Jesus. Consider Him who endured from sinners hostility against Himself. So that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. He's telling us to consider something that you don't grow weary and don't grow faint-hearted. What are we considering? Consider what Jesus did. The hostility he endured. That's why I was convicted about my grumbling and my whining and complaining. Let me tell you something. The souls, whether it's Honduras, the Philippines, Derby, Nebraska, Wendell, souls are worth so much to God. They're not worth more somewhere else than anywhere else. And you're struggling in sin, verse 4. You're not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood. And you've not forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord. Nor be weary when reproved by him. We are all reproved. We are all rebuked. The word of God corrects us all the time. Let me tell you something. It's not fun, and I don't enjoy it. I've just come to settle what God's called me to do. Correction and preaching is negative. It is. Why? It steps on our toes and tells us we're wrong. By the way, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Let me tell you what that means. You don't get it right, you're right. Your heart's wrong and so is mine. See, you won't understand the good news. You'll understand the bad news. Yes, God sent us a loving Savior to love us and to forgive us. His discipline. For the Lord disciplines the one He loves and chastises every son whom He receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. This is the Christians. This is the people who are saved. God is treating you as sons. For what son is there whose father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline and all have in which all have participated that you are illegitimate children, not sons. Besides this, we had earthly fathers who disciplined us and we respected them. Guys, I want to tell you something about kids and teenagers. I want to teach you parents something that most of you and most of 2022 gets wrong. These kids right here, these teenagers right here, I know this for a fact. I know that these kids here actually love and care about me and have got my back. Mm -hmm. Some of these kids in these rows, I have given them sharper and stronger discipline than you as a parent. You know what's funny? Kids equate discipline to love. Amen. Yes. Yes. Sure. Sure. Alien, Josiah, you guys were back there at the well when I took over for about a year and a half. We went from 20 teens to 80 teens in about 12 months. That first five weeks, I done put down the hammer. I'm talking about Thor's hammer shot. <laughs> all the parents of me thought they were all ticked off and going to leave. Guess what happened? They set a foundation for something. And guess what? Over the next 10, 12 months, after those first few weeks, guess what? No more problems. Amen. They all respected me, loved me. And guess what? They started bringing their friends. Guess what? We started growing. Amen. Look at me. Discipline is equated to love. Yes. They need our correction. Yes. They need us to tell them, hey, 
I know you don't feel like getting up and going to church. I love you and care about you. Get your butt out of bed. Get dressed and go to church. Amen. Your bad attitude is not going to rule me in my day. Amen. God rules me. Not your bad attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? Verse 10, for they disciplined us for a short time as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, that we may share in his holiness. He talks about how much more perfect the discipline of God is than us as human parents. For the moment, pay attention, this is important. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. News flash. For the moment, somebody say the moment. All discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. Let me tell you what that means. They don't feel good to go, thank you. <laughs> and neither do I. But then I have the attitude that Mr. Dunn did when he stood up and read from Job. Thank you, God, for loving me enough to come and correct me because you care about me. Amen. But later, somebody say later. later. Remember, for the moment it ain't fun. But later, somebody say later. later. But later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness for everybody. Mm -mm. I want to talk to the adults as Christians. I want to talk to you who got ticked off earlier when I was preaching. I want to talk to you that got ticked off earlier as Christians, the ones I corrected. Pay attention. Is the fruit of righteousness for everyone? Mm -mm. No. It's not for everyone. Who's it for? To those who have been trained by it. <coughs> That's who it's for. Dig in your heels. Get ticked off of me. Get, talk, get ticked off of God. Dig in your heels. I'm being sarcastic. Don't dig in your heels. <laughs> Submit to God. Amen. For the moment, discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. I wrote a note in my Bible, training leads to strength. Amen. Yeah. Training leads to strength. You know, when you work out in the gym, I, I, for years, I, I circuit train now. I'm so busy. I don't go in and do leg day or chest day. I just do a little bit of circuit training when I can. I'm busy. You know, when you're in the gym, you're actually not getting bigger. You're tearing down your muscles. See, at the time, it's painful. But later on, later on, it grows. Discipline and training leads to strength. That's right. It leads to strength. Therefore, lift up your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees. Make straight paths for your feet. So that what is lame may be put out of joint, but rather may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Worship team, come on. Back to Psalm 103. We're almost done. Psalm 103, verse 9. He will not always try, nor he keep us anger forever. Listen to this church, I got good news. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Somebody say amen. amen. Guess what? God's not fair. That ought to make us happy. Amen. Why? He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. God's not fair. He has not dealt with us accordingly as he should have. You know what we deserve? When you get a hold of what you deserve, you'll let go of your pride and your arrogance. Just like Caleb. The word is preaching, amen. amen. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is the steadfast love toward those who fear him. For as far as the east is from the west. See, you go east, you'll always be going east. For as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Somebody say, I'm forgiven. Amen. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. And for the wind passes over it, it is gone. And its place knows it no more. Thank God. I, I love hearing that. He remembers our frame. Sometimes as a Christian, I'm like, my goodness. What do I have to do with these thoughts? Man, I want to be bitter here. I want to be angry here. I want to be lustful here. I want to do this and that. I want to be selfish. Yes, as Christians, we deal with sin. Yes, as Christians, we deal with sin. Does that mean I'm perfect? No, I'm saved and I'm born again and I'm not ruled by my sinful life anymore. My flesh still exists though. It does. But guess 
what? I'm not ruled by my flesh. I'm ruled by the Spirit of God inside of me. That's why I can live and walk and follow Jesus Christ and live and walk in victory. Guess what? Sometimes our, sometimes our flesh, our body, sometimes, oh my goodness, I don't feel God at all. Oh my goodness, what in the world? Let me tell you something. Know this, church. He knows our frame. He remembers that we're blessed. Thank God. He knows what we're going to do. That's for man of days are like grass. Verse 16, the wind passes over and it is gone. His place is no more. Everybody pay attention. Your salvation is very important. And I deeply, God deeply loves you and cares about you. And if you are not following Jesus Christ as Lord, if he's not the boss of your life, get right with God today. You are not promised the rest of today. You are not promised the rest of tomorrow. Everyone put your hand on your heart. Please put your hand on your heart. Heart is beating, you're alive. If that heart stops, you're going to stand before God, and eternity will be here. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on, on everyone. Huh? Someone said, I'm calling Christians right now. Everybody stand with me in this room. I'm calling Christians. This is a call to worship. But the steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear Him. And His righteousness to His children's children, to those who keep His covenant. And to remember to do His commandments. Yes, you are called. Yes, I have a new splash in this 2022 grace era where you think you can do whatever you want. No, you can't. No, you can't. If you love God, you will be doing His commandments. Nobody had to go tell me to throw away my corn and slip not CD. No one had to go tell me to get rid of my drugs. I was born of spirit. Born again. I didn't want to walk in darkness anymore. I wanted to follow Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life. Verse 19. Listen to this call to worship. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the you mighty ones who do his word, obey the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. He comes back and finishes right where he started. Sometimes, Steve, you've got to call yourself, hey soul.
here that get God's best? Is there anybody in here that wants God's best? Is there anybody in here in these last days where the darkness knows his time is short? Is there anyone here in here where these last days before we head to eternity wants to do something for God on this side of heaven? Got that call, came up here. God reminded me of something. 